Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we have something exciting to talk about the new guild skill line Suchik Order that comes with the Somerset chapter. I will go through all the skills and morphs, also through the passives, I will first talk about them and at the end I will showcase each of the morphs so you actually can see all the visuals. So let's get started. First off we have Undo here. Step backwards in time, resetting your health, magical stamina and position to what they were 4 seconds ago. You get 2 morphs with this, Precognition and Temporal Guard. So what this skill does is, it basically teleports you back 4 seconds ago and will reset your magical stamina to what it was 4 seconds ago. And you have 2 morph choices. The first one here, you can cast the ability while crowd controlled and will automatically gain crown control immunity. So you can actually cast the ultimate, for example, while you're stunned. This is important, if you for example don't have enough stamina to break free, you can actually use this ultimate to teleport back to where you were 4 seconds ago. Then we have temporal guard, step backwards in time resetting your health again and all that stuff. And then, while slotted, your damage taken is reduced. So you get minor protection. 8% damage reduction, that's a lot. When we look at this skill, when I... Let me just use one of the abilities and... Look at the Magicka, at my Magicka. There we go. So it's going down, I will run. This looks freaking amazing. And I will actually showcase you in a second. As you can see, you can what you can do with this skill is also you can jump off structures and something. This is especially helpful in Zerudil in PvP, for example. You can jump off keep balls and teleport right back up to if you want. This is something really cool. Again, I will show each of the two morphs after I'm done talking. Now we have time stop. Basically, freeze the passage of time at the target location, gradually reducing the movement speed of enemies in the area during the channel before finally stunning them in place for 3 seconds when the channel completes. So this ability does what it basically says, time stop, it stops time, it kinda starts freezing you and at some point you get stunned. Now as you can see it has a cast time on it. The radius is 8 meters, so quite big, as you could have seen here. Pretty big. And it also looks really cool. There is also two morphs. Borrow time negates healing done on enemies that are stunned. So enemies that are stunned have the next 5k points of healing completely negated for 3 seconds. That's quite strong, mostly for PvP. Then we have time freeze. Removes the cast time, but it takes longer to stun the enemy. So, it's instant cast, but the stun will take longer. The next ability I want to talk about is Imbue Weapon. Now this, infuse your weapon with power, causing your next light attack used within 2 seconds to deal an additional X amount of physical damage. There's two morphs, Elemental Weapon. Converts into a magic ability and deals magic damage, applies a random status effect. We can apply burning, concussion and chilled. And you can see it actually deals quite a nice amount of damage. Then we have the stamina morph. Heals you for a percentage of the damage done. So the base morph is a stem ability. Then you get extra healing as a stem morph. And the magic morph you can convert it into magic damage. That's something really cool. Now this ability actually looks really nice. Now my weapon is infused. Keep in mind the buff only holds for about 2 seconds. So it's not for long. Let me try to find the monster really quickly. There we go, just to showcase. So there it is. You can't see a lot because it kind of gives a certain glowy effect on the enemy. And obviously, as the weapon says, it only goes off 
when you actually do a light attack, otherwise it will not work. As it says, pausing your next light attack. So you can combine that very well if you time it correctly, especially in PvP. And the next one, accelerate, bend time and space around you to gain major expedition for 3 seconds and minor force for 12 seconds. Increasing your movement speed by 30% and critical damage by 10%. Now we have two morphs, channeled acceleration, triple saturation, but adds a cast time. So you have 1.3 seconds cast time, but you get 36 seconds of minor force and 9 seconds of expedition, but it doesn't really matter. 36 seconds of minor force, that's a lot of extra time. That's really, really fancy. Magic always kind of had a problem that they did not have access to minor force, and this kind of fixes the problem. I'm really excited about this skill. Race against time. Now this is another morph. Reduces the cost of sprint for a short period. You get 50% sprint cost reduction. It's instant cost. I don't really think this morph is worth it. This one seems to be way more interesting. When we actually use this, that's how the ability looks like. You get this fancy glow around the arms. Then we have Mend Wounds. Invoke the rights of Mowitta, replacing your next light or heavy attack used within 3 seconds with healing abilities that can be used on allies. Your light attack heals for X amount over 10 seconds. Your heavy attack heals for X amount every 1 second while casting. So when we act, let's first talk about the morphs. Mend Spirit increases your allies physical and spell resistance while you heal them. So you actually get my major resolve and major war, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5.3k, that's a lot. Then we have symbiosis, you heal yourself for a percentage of the healing done to the ally, that's also something really cool. So this is how your hands will glow, then you could basically target one of your group members or something with it. The last active skill, meditate. Focus your body and mind into a meditative state, healing for 1.5k health and restore 1.5k magic and stamina every 1 second. Now this is a toggle, keep that in mind, so you can be interrupted or you need to turn it off to get out of it. One of the morphs, deep thoughts, increases the amount of magic and stamina restored. So here we get 1.5 and here 1.7, so it's a very small extra amount that you actually get introspection maintaining the channel increases the amount of health restored that's actually also nice so you get more healing 10 percent every tick so that's pretty cool when we look at this ability the one i basically used at the start of the video In my opinion, all the visuals of those new skills are done very, very well. Danimax did a good job with that. Now let's get to the passives before I showcase all the skills. See the Unseen. The insight you have gained from the Suchik Order grants you vision of spiritual world. You can now interact with rifts all throughout Tamriel. That's basically... You can find rifts and they will have loot in them, actually really good loot, so it's definitely worth searching them. This is just one of the passives. Then, Clairvoyance reduces the cost of your Suchik Order abilities by 15%. So you get cost reduction if you have this. Spell Orb, now this is a very interesting one. When you cast a Suchik Order ability while you are in combat, you generate a spell charge. When you reach 5 spell charges, you launch a spell orb at the closest enemy, to you dealing 3k magic damage or physical damage, whichever is higher. The spell charges must be generated within 10 seconds of each other, or all charges will be lost. I will showcase that in a second. Then concentrate the barrier. While you have a Suchik Order ability slotted and are blocking, you gain a damage shield that absorbs 5k damage. This damage shield recharges back to full strength after you spend 10 seconds not blocking. This is basically a free shield, so to say. 
It looks also quite cool. And when when it gets depleted, you stop blocking, it will recharge automatically. It's only a small shield, but it's definitely helpful. Then Deliberation, while you're casting or channeling a Suchik Aura ability, you gain major protection, reducing your damage taken by 30%. But this is really strong. Major protection is insane damage mitigation. If you actually use the abilities in the right time, sure it's only channeled for a short time. If you keep channeling abilities, you can keep the major protection on yourself. Now, I do think I talked enough. Let me now showcase all the different morphs. Let's first start with the spell orb, actually. So you actually can see how that looks like. So we need to use a Suchig Order ability while I am in combat. Actually wandering. Yeah. You see, I generate those bubbles around me. And then when I have five, it shoots at the enemy. And... Up. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it definitely helps. And it also has a pretty cool effect. I do think it counts as direct damage, so it's definitely helpful. So we have seen all the base morphs. Now I will start with the morphs on the top. So we have the time bubble. That was this one, borrowed time. Then we have the infused weapon. We have channeled acceleration, this is a cast time. Symbiosis for the uh, the man spirit, sorry. For the healing. And the um, deep thoughts. Now let me get some ultimate points. If I actually can find the enemy, there we go. So now you can see when I cast something, for example, then I can teleport back. This is a really, really cool feature. I mean, the ability of the ultimate looks amazing. Now, let's take a look at the other morph. Now, I do have all the other morphs. Time Freeze, Crushing Weapon, Race Against Time, Symbiosis, Introspection, and Temporal Guard. As you can see, this is now instant cast. And then it kind of takes time till it gets charged. Pretty, pretty cool. The weapon. Why am I disappearing? Still looks about the same, a little bit different glow. Race against time. Now this here you can see the instant cast now is removed. So you can keep up the speed buff very easily. And sprinting is also a lot cheaper. For 3 seconds. Can be nice to move around fast. And we have again the healing ability. And again the... Which one is it? Introspection. Temporal guard. So here you basically get the minor protection. I don't... Let's actually see if it looks different. So when I run around, like I, I cast abilities. This is pretty cool, you can replace this quite fast and then... Looks about the same. But as you can see, overall, the skill line, I really, really do like it. I do think the abilities are strong and it will steer up... ...builds and all that kind of stuff a lot. Because there's so much new possibilities you actually can play around with. Which is nice, that's a nice thing. Got stunned there. 
Why is my character disappearing anyway? I do hope you found this introduction to this new skill line helpful. If you do have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Please make sure not to forget to subscribe and hit that juicy like button. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.